Today I have with me Sudhakar Pawada from Indigo Mill Designs. Hello and welcome. Hi Michael, pleasure to be here. So what do you do at Indigo Mill Designs? Uh, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Indigo Mill Designs. And, and what, problem, what problems or problem is, is Indigo Mill Designs trying to solve? Um, we tackle sort of the pretty big problem of dyeing um, denim, dyeing with uh, denim with indigo basically. Um, indigo does not like cotton. That's a major challenge. To address that, you use a lot of chemistry, a lot of harsh chemistry, uh, lots of water, multiple depths, and it's a very, very complex process. What we have done is simplified the process and made it environmentally friendly. Okay, so for our listeners, just a little bit more detail on, on why uh, sort of indigo dyeing is so harmful. My understanding is it's harmful in different parts of the process to create genes, right? So creating genes even before the dyeing, you have to get the cotton to a certain type of quality, right? and that's using certain types of methods from caustic sodas and such. And those things, as I understand, can end up in the waterways, they can affect the oxygen in waterways and, and make it impossible for life to, to exist there. And then, right, there's other parts where we're more closer to the dying. If you go into the dying, do, do you know what, what the specific impacts are? So specifically, uh, as I mentioned, indigo does not like cotton. And so, right before dyeing, you actually treat it with caustic to open up the pores to ensure actually that the indigo can go in. Second, you, uh, you, the dye bath tends to have very high levels of uh, caustic and very high levels of a material called hydro. And that ensures that actually the indigo can get into the yarn. Okay. And this all of this ends up in the wastewater stream later on and being salts are very, very difficult to remove. And the dye obviously also ends up sometimes, if not properly treated, into uh, the, waste, into the uh, public uh, sort of river system, etc. So uh, I, I guess what we haven't said, which is important for everyone to understand, is how much denim we consume on this planet. So um, globally, uh, there's 5 billion meters of denim uh, produced every year uh, with probably 100 billion gallons of uh, water uh, used in production of these uh, denim. Uh, denim is really loved by consumers, but it's an extremely thirsty and dirty business. Fair enough. So, so tell me about your innovation. How does it work specifically? So what we do is, um, um, to, we do two things. First, we actually use foam as a way of carrying the indigo into the yarn. Second is we meter in that foam directly into the yarn. And what this does, uh, it addresses the two major dimensions. So first dimension, because we're using foam, that has very little water and we use less water. Secondly, because we're metering it and the way we're delivering it, it goes straight into the yarn rather than sitting on the surface of the yarn. We eliminate all the washing steps that are required, which once again reduces water consumption and wastewater. Uh, also, and related to the fact that the dye actually goes into the yarn rather than sitting on the surface, uh, this creates uh, a quality benefit, um, which, is, which is what is called in the industry referred to as wash fastness. And a typical wash fastness for denim is in the range of around two and a half on a scale of one to five. Um, with our technology, we have been able to achieve up to values of almost four. And I should be impressed by that, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> four, oh my. God. So on a scale of one to five, you don't have much window. Currently we are at two and a half when you go off by one and a half units, that's a pretty big improvement. Okay, okay. Does that affect the, the, the traditional gene, um, not feeling, but... but uh, the wash the look. Yeah. No, it does not affect. Because I was thinking often genes we, we have, we see that on the top it's the blue and under, the, under it's white, on the, under the 
the fiber there? Is it, will that change? Or? No, that does not change. Yeah. So as I mentioned, the dye does not sit on the surface, but however, the dye actually forms a nice ring um, uh, around the yarn, inside the yarn, and that gets washed down. And that is one of the critical characteristics of denim, and we retain all of those characteristics. And so your innovation is replacing, of course, this traditional dye process. And uh, what positive impact, you've mentioned uh, water uh, reductions, uh, chemical reductions. So tell me, what, what positive impacts do you think this will have if scaled? So we eliminate actually all the hazardous chemicals uh, like caustic and the hydro from the dyeing process. Uh, we eliminate wastewater discharge um, from the um, dyeing process. Uh, we reduce water consumption by 99%. 99. Okay. What happened to that last 1%? Um, well, there is some water that still has to be used. Uh, and we actually reduce our energy consumption by 95%. All with this foam. All with this foam. And so the foam is the secret sauce. Well, foam plus um, the process conditions under which this is done. We use um, a very inert atmosphere. And that inert, what time was that? Uh, inert atmosphere. Inert. 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 Yeah. Inert. Okay. okay. And and what is that? So that effectively means um, we should not have um, um, oxygen is the enemy of indigo in terms of uh, solubility, and we eliminate oxygen in our process. Okay. Do you have any current clients already? So the uh, as I mentioned, this is a process technology, and it also involves machinery. And uh, we have actually placed two machines, um, one in India and one in Spain. Uh, this, uh, the Spanish mill is uh, already in production. And uh, in the next month or so, we are actually expecting two brands to introduce products made out of this. Uh, they're Wrangler and Gap. Both of them actually have made public statements. Congratulations. Uh, what do you think you need to do to scale this then? Um, I think one of the critical things would be, it's a disruptive technology uh, requiring uh, a belief, requiring investment into, uh, into, this, um, into this technology. So one of our asks from uh, the brands is to work with us uh, to identify um, how they could deploy this technology, how could they talk about this technology. Uh, that would be one of our asks. Uh, second, I think, comes back down to is um, working with the mills uh, to deploy that and work through the kinks. Any technology you go through, the initial, um, um, a lot of kinks will come up as we work with these mills. We want to work with the mills to overcome that one by one. Okay. And, and as, as a disruptive technology, uh, does this not simplify the ways the mills would work or just as a, a different way of working? I, I, it does simplify. Once, it, once it's implemented, it does simplify. Uh, right now, there's a lot of art in how denim has died. We actually, I think, bring it more into a scientific realm. I'm not dismissing art. Art is still very critical, especially in the textile <laughs> business. Uh, but it makes it much more scientific, much more reproducible and does better quality. So I want you to just take a, a step back now that you've been working with our industry, figuring out how to take a, a brilliant idea and get it adopted. How receptive do you think our industry is to these types of innovations? For instance, on a scale of one to five, if one is not receptive and five is very receptive. Um, that's a um, loaded question. Um, <laughs> so I'm sitting here at ITMA uh, where you have huge number of companies doing a lot of innovation, lots of new technologies, all the way from process, machinery, chemistry, okay, and fiber, all different kinds of innovations are happening. So this industry is innovative by nature. Um, however, I would say the brands probably are not as receptive to innovation, not because they're not interested in it, but because of the sense of urgency. It's like, what can we do for the next season? What can we do for the next calendar? And so there is a little bit of an impatience 
to for disruptive innovations, which often take a little longer time. Um, so the industry is innovative, but there is that impatience sometimes likely leads to certain innovations not succeeding as rapidly because of uh, um, wanting everything quickly. And your experience is that mills take the cues from the brands. That's true. Okay. Sudhakar, thank you very much for being here.